Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Trisha with Insectopia and we are here looking at a um, an insect that we sketched in the past. Actually this insect, the crawling water bug, in the family Necoridae we sketched back in June of 2022 and I can't say this year anymore. Happy New Year's! It is January 1st and um, I have had an absolutely wonderful year um, I have had an absolutely wonderful year with all of you, and I uh, definitely, I started this, I started 2022 um, sketching and doing one live stream a week, and um, just starting to illustrate and to practice my hand and hopefully teach along the way, and I ended up finding a really great group of people that I have enjoyed um, learning from and teaching over the last year. I look forward to continuing to do that. Um, I would say that in the upcoming year I plan on attending more um, nature journaling workshops that are done by other people. I'd really like to, you know, um, really start joining that community. Now, um, uh, I've been working on a coloring book, and I've been, I really, really tried to get it done for Christmas, but as you know, time seemed to have, I don't know, pressed fast forward between November and December, um, with all of the holidays and families and those types of things, I wasn't able to get it done by Christmas, um, but I am still working on it, so I believe that there are approximately eight sketches left, um, to finish the outlining, and then all I have to do is put them into the book and write up and write up some out and write it all up. So, I'm hoping to get it done in the next month or two. But um, I thought that we could really give it a go and just look over a couple of the last sketches that I'm putting in there, and maybe we can even look at um, if I finish these, I'll be able to show you all of the line drawings that are going into the book, which will be super cool and you'll be able to see which ones um and i have um i have a micron pen set now so instead of just having the one size of micron pens i have this awesome micron set um that has uh a bunch of different sizes of tips so i'll be able to give a little bit more fine detail and things like wing venations and um punctations or spots in the exoskeleton um, this one, admittedly, has already been inked. I just hadn't erased it yet. So we're going to start today by just erasing this pen, um, this pencil. Um, I have not gone in and cross-hatched in the eyes, but I believe I wanted to do that after I got rid of the pencil. Just to see, just to make sure that I didn't get confused by all of the extra lines happening. I think there's one or two of these ink lines that I'm going to have to edit in a computer to make them straighter or clearer, uh, but this one I think turned out okay. See, I'm going to end up rounding this one out just a little bit and fixing that line up, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with him. Um, I am going to cross hatch inside of these compound eyes just to make them look like eyes. Um, this one does not have any legs, and that's because um, the legs are not really visible from the dorsal or from the top point of view. Although I did flip it over and draw a ventral point of view so that you could see that the front pair of legs are raptorial, meaning that they have the ability to kind of grab onto their prey. Um, those legs are very similar to like a praying mantid's front legs. Uh, this is called a crawling water bug. Oh, and I have it written up there too. So they're called a crawling water bug, and they are a true bug. You can see that there's a space in between water and bug, meaning that they have a piercing and sucking mouth part. And these guys, admittedly, when I was learning about them, I always imagined them as the miniature giant water bugs because they kind of look like that. Um, they look a little bit like a giant water bug, except that they're tiny, teeny tiny. They are also venomous, just like the giant water bug. So 
So I'm coming in here and giving myself some cross hatching lines. those look like compound eyes now yay all right so that is our crawling water bug the next one that we that i was gonna sketch is this ebony jewel ring jewel wing Coleopteryx maculata and um <clears throat> the ebony jewel wing is actually an insect that we talked about during my last live stream on Thursday because we ended up sketching a dragonfly and we talked about the differences between dragonfly and damselfly colorations. Um, this jewel wing has a really beautiful metallic coloration and that metallic coloration will stay um, for the entirety of the life of the specimen, whereas dragonfly colors, they fade almost right away. All right, so I'm just gonna get us. I'm just gonna get us started with um, some outlines of these that I've already done. So a lot of times when you see a triangle on the top of the head, like our damselfly has, that is generally the upper lip. We call it the labrum, spelled L-A-B-R-U-M. All right, and now with this specimen, um, the first segment of the thorax is diagonal and starts here and goes all the way up to this point. The second segment of the thorax is this little itty bitty guy, and then the third is this little bitty guy. But this, um, the dorsal point of view is a little um, misleading, because if you were to turn the specimen sideways, you'll see that there are these diagonal lines, and all of the segments are approximately the same width. It's just that instead of them all being up, upright they're all angled like this so you have one two three and then the tops of them are all that's showing which is why the first one looks really really long because it's this angle on the top but then the second and the third ones look short but that's just because they're on an angle Alright, so I've got some of that taken care of. These um, circles right here, I'm going to come in with um, uh, a thinner ink line. Probably the one that I use for the actual wing venations. So when I'm getting to the end, the tip of this abdomen, I can tell that this is a male. He has these two little graspers at the end, or he's got these two little claws at the end of its abdomen. That is going to be what he's going to use to hold on to the ladies during mating, during the mating process. Alright, so I've got some antenna on there. Now, we have on damselflies, we have something called the arculus and the nodus. Um, the nodus is right here. It's also called the node sometimes, just depending on who you're talking to. And the arculus is in this region. I would have to look it up. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the outline for our wings taken care of, and then I'll switch over to the other pen. All right. 
right that front wing and then the hind wing So those are the, the left side. And then I'm going to try and make essentially the exact same shape on the right side. Although that can be a little bit more, it can be a little difficult to get each side the exact same. So I want to make sure that I at least show this point where the note is going to be, where it comes in a little bit before going all the way out to the end. smallest point tip uh, to get the wing venations. I'm using a 005 point. Also to give myself that muscular definition. So we've got all of those taken care of. And then I want to just come back in and give myself some of these wing veins. Now I believe that I said this when I was also sketching our friend here. But um, I did not go ahead and I did not count every single one of its wing veins or anything like that. Um, I'm going ahead and just giving it kind of the overall appearance of what the wing veins look like, but not giving every single vein. So um, the wing venation on a damselfly is very long and then kind of netted or checkered. So I'm just going to go back in here and add a whole bunch of cross veins in between the ones that I've already set up. And um, sometimes off of the cross veins, you have another vein that comes out and starts. So that's something that, you know, as the spaces in between the veins gets wider, you can add another vein. Just giving our damselfly the appearance. that it has complete wing venation. Yay! All right. Um, then we're going to go back in and do the hind wing. And just like this sketch, I'm only doing the venations on the left-hand side. If I decide to do the wing venations on the right-hand side, I'm probably not going to. I'm just doing the ones on the left-hand side. And then um, I think what's going to end up happening is that in my book, I'll challenge the person who is drawing to... Um, to create some wing venation for the damselfly. So ideally you start cross veins from the narrowest parts of the veins and then you work your way out. And then once it gets too wide, go ahead and just create another um, longitudinal vein or long vein. Alrighty. And 
then we get to erase. It's one of my favorite parts, erasing all of the pencil lines and making the sketch look clean. Saying what it looks like on the underneath. Let's see what these left wings look like. And I can always come back in and add more if I'd like. It's not looking bad. Yay! All right, so that's a damselfly. Uh, we also, I think, this day sketched a damselfly nymph, but I'm not going to be doing that one in the book. So we just have this guy here. All right, next is the dorsal of a lightning bug. I have the, uh, I'll go ahead and write that here. Uh, this is a firefly. This is the ventral point of view. So when you flip a firefly upside down, these are its eyes, its antenna, the shield that guards its head, three pairs of legs, and an abdomen. And these last three segments are the ones that glow. Now, if I flip it over, this is what it looks like on the dorsal or on the top. And the dorsal point of view is the one that I haven't done an outline of yet. Uh, but I figure if we've got the ventral point of view, we should also put the dorsal on there. So let's go ahead and give this guy an outline. This one should be pretty simple because there aren't any legs or anything on it. Um, so hopefully this one will go fast quickly. Or right, we'll go quickly, go quickly also. I got a coffee maker for Christmas. I've never had a coffee machine in the house. Um, in any of the homes I've ever lived in, I've never had a coffee maker in the house. And so I am excited to, uh, I'm excited to be able to drink some coffee. Uh, I'm unhappy with the way that the pronotum is not even. It's not making me happy. I think I want it to... That'll be better. The outline of our pronotum. This right here in between the elytra is our scutellum. Uh, there's some colorations. Very good. I probably am going to come back in and um, shade in this space in between the pronotum and the elytra because there is this little bit of a, of a darker space in here when we're looking at fireflies. Uh, then let's go ahead and give ourselves the center of the elytra. And I 
believe on this specimen, this was one of the specimens that has this colored border on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pen that, I'm going to take my uh, two, and I'm just, it's a little bit of a thinner line, and I'm going to give myself the, um, these borders. So right here, oops, oh no. Gonna have to fix that. Sorry, guys. That side's better. So we've got the borders on our elytra. Uh, we have the scutellum, the pronotum. I'm going to grab a pen to go ahead and shade in this space here. I did some of the words back in the day in pen. Alright, so now we have a dorsal point of view and the ventral point of view. Oh, this one is going to be so cool. All right, this one's going to take a little bit longer, but I'm very, very happy with this sketch, so I'm hoping that our ink line is going to be just as pretty. This is a bumblebee. <laughs> So bumblebees are not their own family. Bumblebees are actually in the family Apidae, which is the family for, well, I generally call it the bees, but there are lots and lots of families of bees. So maybe you want to call Apidae like, and they're all true bees, common bees, maybe. So like, Honeybee, honeybees and bumblebees are in the family Apidae, but things like leafcutter bees are megachylids or sweat bees are helictids. So there are other types of bees that are in other families, but Apidae, spelled A-P-I-D-A-E, is, uh, is the family for, I guess, what you would call the common bees, like bumblebees and honeybees. This one we sketched back in May. Oh, she's so pretty. I can't wait to get, get her started. So let's see. I'm going to start with this right compound eye because I'm happier with the shape of the left one, happier with the left one than the right one. The right one seems to have a little bit of an odd shape, and I think where it comes from is the base right here. Maybe if it was just a little bit straighter. Something like that. All right, compound eye number one. Pound eye number two. 
three simple eyes or ocelli. You have antennal bases here and then the beginning of the antenna. The first segment of insect antennae are called the scape. The second segment is called the pedicel. And then the rest of the segments of an insect antenna are called the flagellum. So sometimes the scape and the pedicel will have different shapes. Um, sometimes they'll be different sizes. Sometimes they have different functions. So that's why we give the scape and the pedicel unique names. Also, the first and second segments of insect antenna are likely to um, are likely to be called out in keys a lot of times. So instead of writing, rewriting antennal segment one, antennal segment two, over and over and over again, scientists just decided to give them their own unique names. All right, now we have to come back here and give the bottom of our head. All right. Now, all of these, um, all of this hair in here, I'm going to be coming back in with um, my 005 pen, the smallest pen in this set. Um, so I'm just starting out with the outlines of the legs and the body. All right, so we've got the thorax. Got an abdomen starting. Now the abdomen of bumblebees seems to be kind of wide and um, you can't see the individual segments very well of a bumblebee's abdomen, but that's just because of the amount of hair on it, the amount of fluff on it. So when we come back and we start adding all of the, um, all of the, um, the CD or the hair on our bumblebee, then it'll look a little bit more realistic. All right. This seg these short segments that you're seeing right here, we call that the coxa, spelled C-O-X-A. That's essentially like the hip bone of an insect. It's what helps connect the leg to the body. So we've got that first leg taken care of. Let's go over here to our other pair. I love that this sketch, I have completed the whole thing. The, um, the both sets of legs, the wing venation, that type of stuff. I'm pretty excited about it. So you have the coxa, you have the femur, the tibia, and then you have what we call the tarsal segments. These are um, essentially like the toe segments. And on a on this bunny honey uh on this bumblebee, the tarsal segments are these the tarsal claws at the end. There were two claws on each claw, so they were I think we call that bifurcated when there are two claws on the end of one tarsal claw. All right, let's hit the middle leg. All right, 
on the other side. legs. Now, I only did the hind leg on the right hand side because the wing venation on the left side was so important. So, and I was just noticing that I only sketched five out of the six legs, but the wing venation over here is so important that I think I'm just going to outline the sketch the way it is. So I've got that hind leg taken care of. Um, the only other things that I want to make sure end up in the final outline are these wings. And then I'm going to switch over into a, a smaller pen to get the hair of my bumblebee that we call CT, spelled S-E-T-A-E. If you've ever wondered um, what the scientific name for fluffy is, it's CETOS, S-E-T-O-S-E. Um, so you can say that bumblebee is so setos, and it's the same as saying the bumblebee is so fluffy. So welcome, viewer. I want to let you know that we uh, we are not looking at the insects under the microscope today. We are outlining older older images so that I can finish this coloring book that I'm building. People have been asking about it. So if you have any um, any questions about our bumblebee here, go ahead and let me know. Uh, just keep in mind that you have to be subscribed to chat in the, um, in the chat box. All right, so when we're looking at the wing venation on a bumblebee, it's important, there's only a handful of um, like cells that are important for the identification of a bumblebee. And these are these three right here. So if we're talking about this first vein up here on the top, that's gonna be called the costa, spelled C-O-S-T-A. But then underneath the, then you have, then you have, let's see, I'll just go ahead and draw it. You've got, the costa runs along this side, and then this cell right here is considered the coastal cell um, because it's created by the costa vein. And then you have one, two, three subcoastal cells. And in bumblebees, that's going to help you identify it down to family, down to apidy. In fact, all apidy are going to have these three subcoastal cells, like um, bumblebees and honeybees. And then I just added a couple of bonus wing veins in here just to give it the appearance. And um, on this on the right side, I'm just going to put a handful of longer lo longer um, lines on it, but I want to give most of the attention to that hind wing here. All right, so now that we have most, most of the outline of our beautiful bumblebee, um, I want to add the uh, cross-hatching in the compound eyes, and then... Um, we're going to add the CD or the hairs. Let's see. We're going to go this way.
All right, one side, now the other side. all over um those cd happen to be um heavily on the tibia looks like fairly light but still in existence on our femurs here and here and the tibia let's see And then the hairs do kind of come out from this from a central point here. So when I'm adding these hairs, I want to make sure that I'm kind of starting from the center and then working my way. Um, I'm, I'm stroking out towards the edge of our B, but I'm working in towards the center, if that makes sense, if that makes sense. Um, because that way I can make sure that these CD or that these hairs get, um, get layered on top of one another. And try not to make them in absolutely perfect lines because they are hairs. They go where they want. So if you're noticing that your hairs look too, um, are looking almost too controlled, go ahead and add one or two that don't fit in. Now the hind tibia are very important because the hind tibia are where the pollen basket is. So this is where the hairs, make sure that the hairs on the hind tibia are really long and unobstructed because those are the hairs that are going to be actively doing things like picking up pollen. And even though I don't want the hair to obstruct the wing, I do want to make sure that there are some hairs still underneath that wing there so that it doesn't look like it's an empty bare spot. All right. And it appears that this bumblebee was mostly cetose on the thoracic region and then only on the first abdominal segment. And then afterwards, the CD really, um, really thins out. So I'm just adding the hairs right here to the first segment. And then I'll come back through this abdomen and just add individual hairs, but definitely not as thick. Just a handful. Something like to make it look fluffy without looking so fluffy. Perfect. You ready to take an eraser to this piece? Look at how beautiful! Eek! All right, I'm gonna erase the rest of it now. So 
that is the final bumblebee. Happy bumblebee. All right, next is the Steel Blue Cricket Hunter Chlorion Aurarium. This one is a really cool thread-waisted wasp. So you can see it has this very, very, very small, I believe we call that the peduncle. <laughs> um, yeah, I believe we call it the peduncle, that thin, really thin wasp waist. I would have to look into that again. Gonna go ahead and switch back over to my number three pen. Let's see, this one we sketched in June 23rd. I also have today a Predacious Diving Beetle, the Eastern Tailed Blue, Cupido Comintus, um, which had three different types of, well, right here it zoomed in on the edge of the eye, the scales around the eye, and then the hair. See, the the scales or the hair around the eyes are actually white. It makes um, these blue butterflies, it makes them look like they have like little raccoon eyes. They have white circles around them. And I put inside outside, meaning that this is, um, I put inside outside. But what I meant, I guess, is this is the wing venations that you can see from the inside. And this is the coloration or the, or what the design looks like on the outside. So there's the Eastern Tail Blue. And then a scorpion fly. And if we can get all four of these sketched today, that means I finished. Let's do that. Let's finish. That'll make me feel good. And then I have to clean my bug space. It's gotten a little crazy around here. <laughs> antenna. Two antenna. And let's go ahead and look at our head here. Let's see. When insects have eyes that dip in like this a little bit, we call them reniform. We call them reniform eyes. Reniform is a word that means kidney shaped. So if you imagine like a kidney bean, the eyes are shaped like a kidney bean. So that's why we call them reniform. Uh, the Steel Blue Cricket Hunter also has three ocelli, and those ocelli are on kind of a mound on the top of its head, so um, I always add, I like to add this little Y here to show that there is um, kind of like a hill or a mountain there. The eyes are looking in all directions. this 
specimen, I did the front two legs, but then the middle and the hind leg, I just put on the right hand side. So um, it's likely that in the book, this will be either dotted on the left side or um, kind of like a try and sketch it symmetrically for your own. Let's get these wings in. On the left side, and then one on the right side. on the other side. this middle and the hind leg taken care of. leg. Perfection. And that is all we did for this guy. Um, I am going to go ahead and grab a small... I'll go ahead and do it with the same pen. I'm just going to go ahead and cross-hatch in these eyes. Racer time. Best time. I have 
a whole collection of eraser shavings after I'm done with this type of work. Ladies and gentlemen, what do I do with the eraser shavings? All right, I am happy. I do want to add... that. All right, three more. These three are complicated. You know what? We've done five today, five in an hour, and I am pretty happy with that. I think that, so when I'm doing ink outlines, I can't do too many at a time because I, uh, it takes a whole lot of focus to get in there and keep the line straight. And I want to make sure that I'm not, um, rushing any of the work and, um, I'm keeping my lines as straight as possible. So we are just, we're going to end right here. I'll be happy with that. So the, um, the animals that we ended up sketching today, the Nacorid or the crawling water bug, the ebony jewel wing or um, Coloptrix maculata. The uh, firefly, a lampyrid. Uh, we did the dorsal side, but the ventral side was already done. A bumblebee in the, in the genus Bombus. And the steel blue cricket hunter. Chlorian, 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 Aurarium. And the final three to finish my, uh, to finish the coloring book will be the Predaceous Diving Beetle, the Eastern Tailed Blue, and this beautiful Scorpion Fly. And those three I'll be able to do another time. So... Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for hanging out with me today, for asking all of the questions that um, you wanted answered. Um, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Keep in mind that I do teach classes over on OutSchool. It's a platform for students ages 5 to 8, 9 to 12. So if there's a young person in your life that you would like to have classes with me, um, these are Zoom classes. I see you, you see me, and we chat, and we learn all about bugs. We sketch together. Um, we I have an illustration class and a weekly insect studies that are that run continuously throughout the year. Um, I also have this YouTube channel, so make sure that you subscribe and turn on those notifications so you know if and when I go live randomly. I might go live again today if I finish up a couple of my tasks around the house. Um, and that right there is where you can um, donate to Insectopia. So I super duper 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 appreciate any and all donations that come in through Insectopia. And it really does make, um, make this work a lot easier for me. It gives me the ability to buy things like insect pins and insect drawers and new ink, ink, um, and new pen sets and books and all of the things that make Insectopia and teaching about insects um, realistic and doable in my life. So I really, really do appreciate all of you and all of my followers and listeners. It's something that, you know, has changed my life. So I appreciate it. And if you um, would like to message me or send me um, any of the notes that you took or if you drew today with me, you can go ahead and send them to Trisha at theinsectopia.com. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and stay buggy. Bye.